Welcome to another episode of Junior Achievement of South Florida's Recipe for Success. Just as there are no two recipes that contain the exact same ingredients or measurements, there are no two success stories exactly the same. Recipe for Success features entrepreneurs, visionary leaders, and innovators of all ages who will share the ingredients that make them successful. Here's your host, Lori Salarulo, President and CEO of Junior Achievement of South Florida. I'd like to welcome our guest today, John Duran. John has been a top executive and highly regarded in the global business community. In the last 24 years, John has a proven track record in building and operating successful family entertainment facilities. He's going to share a little with us about his latest successful attraction, Gecko Parks Indoor Trampoline Park. John, welcome to Recipe for Success. Right, glad thank you, you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, so I just had a chance, as you know, to go out and visit Gecko Park. I wanted to flip my shoes off and jump <laughs> on the trampolines. Why don't you? Um, why don't we start off by you sharing a little bit about your venture and Gecko Park and what it's all about? Sure. Gecko Parks is a uh, forty thousand square foot facility, as you saw. We didn't get you on the ninja course yet, <laughs> but we will. Uh, we have eleven attractions. Uh, our concept came from uh, decouching kids. Get them off the couch. Get them into some activity on a daily basis. Uh, so, within that in mind, I've, um, I've been around the attraction world, as you said, for 24 years. So when I created Gecko Parks, I came with a vision where a family can enjoy the day there. The dad could watch the game, have a beer, watch the kids, the moms could sit there on the deck, watch the kids at all times, and the kids could do various activities, uh, all different type of levels of challenges that we have. All right. Yeah, I was watching the Ninja Warriors the other night, and I thought, hmm, I don't know if I could ever do that, but I think I could do Gecko Park. <laughs> um, so you mentioned vision, right? Just now you talked about the vision. Um, tell me a little bit about that um, and how that has played into some of the projects and some of the ventures you've done. Sure. You know, my first venture uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur early on was uh, my first investment was a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museums. Oh. And that turned into uh, five museums that um, I was involved with. Um, some very big projects, one in New York, one in London, one in Jeju Island, uh, you know, worldwide. Gave me the opportunity to travel the world and look at different type of products all the time and different type of concepts. Um, Within the trampoline world, we bought out three trampoline parks, uh, which turned into 11. And I got to see that type of world of more of a regional market. So um, being around the, the space for 24 years, going to big conventions like IAPA, you see what's out there. You see what, you know, what's challenging, what's not challenging for kids, what's entertaining, entertaining. But the main focus that we have is safety comes first. Um, and then it's the entertainment factor from that point on, the wow factor with the kids. Yeah, yeah, that wow factor, yeah. Uh, especially with the newer generations. I think that's something we're all looking at. Um, you know, the entertainment business, to me, at least from the outside looking in, is uh, one of, you know, excitement and, and change, right? Constantly evolving, because as you just said, if you don't create that wow factor and it's not entertaining, right, you won't stay in business probably. Correct. So tell me a little bit about that. How do you keep up with what's going on in the business? Uh, we change our attractions out all the time. We have core attractions like trampoline, ninja, uh, some of our, you know, rope course, rock walls type of challenges. But the change that you change, like our virtual reality, which is the new thing now, it's starting to come to the next level of the virtual reality. Next level is going to be augmented reality. So you see these things at trade shows that are maybe three years, four years or that are coming. It's not yet to invest in on some of them, but you see where the trend's coming. Right. So you want to stay on top of that. You want to keep adding new attractions to your facility. Just like you see Disney adding Star Wars or adding these multi-billion dollar investments that they make, a smaller park has to just still keep alive that way as well. And then we do also do, um, like our parents night out on Friday, Saturday nights. We bring in DJs. Where was this when my kids were little? Yeah, That's yeah, and it's actually really fun, 14 <laughs> and under. Uh, we bring in DJs, they have a great time, they load up on slushies, uh, we turn the lights down and the place turns into a nightclub. Wow. Uh, we fit over 800 kids there and, um, you know, it's a lineup, you know, early on to get there early. 
Um, and it's a really just fun, exciting event. The parents drop off the kids um, cool. and we, we entertain them. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, and so you're going across the generation so that everybody in the family is entertained. So when you go to investors, because I'm assuming that when you sometimes get into these ventures, you are looking for investors, right? Um, at this stage now, I don't. I invest myself. Oh. Um, I'm in a position where I've created a lot of opportunities. So I take the first risk in uh, a few of the stores. I start myself and then as I scale to the next level, then I look at a larger banking type of approach, like right. a private equity firm or something. Right, exactly. And so what are some of the things as you, if, if, so is Gecko Park something you want to take to a bigger scale? Yeah, our next levels, knock on metal here, we're in discussions now. Uh, we're rolling up uh, Gecko Park with another group with 14 locations, and uh, we're backed by a multi-billion dollar fund um, that we're going to spread out a new concept of family entertainment uh, uh, concepts throughout the throughout the country. So and so, where I was going with that on the investor pieces, you know, there's a million things out there that people can invest in, right? Correct. What makes this different? What makes you different to those investors? Why do they want to invest in you? Well, it comes down to ROI. I mean, how fast can I get my money back and how steady can I keep uh, an income coming through? When we did uh, Ripley's, um, you know, it's a franchise that we, we created. Uh, I was a franchisee owner. Uh, my first investment um, was uh, Branson, Missouri, and we got paid back uh, within two years um, and consistently between a 38 to 50 percent margin every year. So when I saw that, That's I said, I'm going to start my own. <laughs> so, you know, not everything's a success. You're going to have your failures in life. But the, um, if you get more, put in more W's uh, out there, right. more wins than losses, then you know, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, so how do you deal with those failures? I think that's so important, right? Uh, we did a, a concept in Orlando, give you one failure. Um, we, we put in three and a half million dollars, me and a couple of guys, and uh, we started a magic show, indoor magic show, um, right on International Drive, beautiful building, the whole thing was set up. And um, we opened in July 2001, September 11th happened, and just killed our business. So you, could, you can't see that unforeseen things that happen. Uh, so you got to dust off and, and move forward. I mean, that's every single thing you do is, is when the worst things happen is how you react and how do you talk to your investors or your groups or your employees um, from that point. And but then, it, didn't, it didn't deter you. You kept going. You kept going yeah, on and you moving gotta, forward, as you said. You definitely have to move forward. I mean, that's, that's you know, for the younger uh, audience, viewers here that, haven't gone through the trials and tribulations that I've gone through. Um, the, you know, the key thing here that I've learned from day one is, is, is to keep moving forward. Every day, you know, I wake up, I clap my hands together, and I say, today's going to be a better day than yesterday. And yesterday was a damn good day. <laughs> so like you that. just got to keep moving forward. And, you know, it's, you always see these ads and these cheerful things all the time. There's a lot of bad days, a lot of days that you're going to sit there and you're going to go, wow, this is, why is this happening to me? Why is it consi consistently happening to me? Then you finally get that movement where things, something works and you stay with it and you grab onto that thing and you say, hey, wow, this is, now I see what I've been working hard towards. You know, it's funny, I was in a, a meeting one day and we were talking about becoming CEOs and, and entrepreneurs and it was a panel and at the end of it, somebody asked me the question of, you know, why did, why did I want to be a CEO or why do you want to be an entrepreneur because we're running a business, right? And I said, well, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, <laughs> absolutely. And so I think you're right. I think that we, there are a lot of tough days, right? And a lot of challenging times and a lot of things that we have to, you know, be concerned about and worry about and get, get, get going. But I think at the end of the day, we'll have some wins, like you said, hopefully more, and, yeah. and some losses. And how we deal with those losses, I think are, to your point, are more important in, than how we deal with uh, the wins. You touched on something earlier uh, when you were talking about Gecko Park, and you talked a little bit about safety, right? And uh, you and I have talked a little bit offline about how you know, things are different than we grew up. And so tell me a little bit about uh, what 
what it was that helped you come up with this idea? What was it that you saw that was changing, right, in these generations and, sure. and what, we, what you were responding to? Because yeah. that's what entrepreneurial is, right, filling a need. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, as we discussed offline was that, you know, this world has changed where when I was a kid, mom would say, just go out and play and, you know, come back before it gets dark or come back for dinner. And today is a different environment that we live in. You know, there's a lot of things that um, the parents are very protective over. Obviously, their kids that they want to know where they're at. They have GPSs on them. They have, you know, they know exactly where they're at or they're with them the whole time. Right, we have chips and sneakers now, I exactly. think. Exactly, right? yeah. So um, the environment I wanted to create was a large indoor facility where it's a safe facility where parents get that sense of ease. Oh, they're at Gecko Park. They're fine. So getting that sense is a very big task for us. You know, you don't see it, but we have 52 cameras in the place. We have security, we have protocols, we have um, safety measures that we have to follow and train all the time for, you know, any situa situation that happens. So we actually build that safe, secu <coughs> safe security portion for the families. Um, we have our parents' night out where we drop off the kids they, we literally take responsibility of the kids. Um, you know, they get a wristband, the kids get a wristband, the parents get a wristband, and they check them out with that same wristband. Um, we make it fun where the kids see it's a, just a great, fun environment, but there's a lot of things behind the scenes that, we, you know, we're watching them. We're seeing what's going on, and we're breaking up any incidents that could potentially happen. Um, when they leave, they're tired, they're exhausted, their parents see that, they go straight to bed. <laughs> they like that. Yeah. And they come back. Happy and then they customers. come back. Happy parents. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, we have the same um, situation here. Uh, we see 58,000 students a year here at JA World. And so if people say to me sometimes, what keeps you up at night? Security is absolutely, and safety is one of those issues. But it, something you said struck me. And so, you know, our mission is to prepare students for the future. And that means specifically around soft skills, critical thinking, problem solving. And something you said struck me, and it was that you know today our kids don't have that free flow, right? They can't just go and figure out how to navigate the streets and, and the neighborhoods and, and figuring out how to get into that stickball or kickball game, right, that was going on uh, on the next street without knowing those kids. How do you possibly, I'm wondering, are there ways for the, the young people that come to Gecko Park uh, through those experiences, uh, they're kind of leaving their parents on the sideline, does it teach them? Are there things there that you think are teaching them to solve problems and contributing to that? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, we have uh, different programs. I'll touch on the first one is we have a, a Ninja Warrior classes. Um, and. It's kind of the new karate, right? Or the new kickboxing or whatever is coming through. It's the Ninja Warrior parkour classes. Uh, we do the exact same things that they do. We teach them discipline. We teach them um, you know, physical education, everything else. Uh, so we have that type of things that you know, the kids actually build their confidence up by being more physically fit or doing the different challenges and so forth. I see it during. Um, say our parents' night out events where we're having dodgeball wars and competitions and jousting wars and stuff where the kids interact or if they're not interacting, we push them to interact. During our birthday parties, um, we have a host that goes with the kids during that, the birthday party experiences. And you know, when you're inviting your class or you're inviting a bunch of people, the parents don't know everybody and the kids don't know everybody. And they kind of subgroup with each other. We bring them all back together we bring that one quiet kid back into the group, making sure they're having the activities and socializing. Right. So indirectly, we are doing promoting this stuff. We are promoting skills. these skills right. that are happening. Right. Yeah. So I want to go back in time a little bit, um, <laughs> back to college days. Sure. Um, when did you know you were an entrepreneur? Uh, when I was 14, I started a business, which was a uh, weed eating business. So, very interesting story. My father uh, was a truck driver, so he, he would come home at night, and he would, we would put an ad in the paper, and my dad would go to the job site where someone needed something, and he'll draw it out, and he'll put a bid on it, and then my brother and I will go up there and we'll cut the grass and stuff. So, 
you know, he'll say, say $100 for the job. Right. And um, we'll get done, and, and next thing you know, we're like, the people are, where's, where's the old guy that came over here, right? So we would collect the check and stuff like that, and because they would pay us at that time, I don't want to age myself, but three thirty-five an hour, right? So I would have made twelve dollars versus right. <laughs> versus a hundred dollars on this stuff. So when my brother took off to military school, um, I uh, I started the business myself. So I had all my friends. Everyone had a weed whacker and uh, a lawnmower. I said, go to this job, do this, and I would just show up to the sites and collect the money or touch up the stuff, and that was it. That was kind of my first entrepreneur. So I worked about two months out of the year where everybody else had bus, bus, you know, you know, a different type of odd jobs right. and stuff. And I worked two months out of the year. I paid for my own clothes. I paid for my, all my school, all my dates, whatever I needed. I had money for the year. So that awesome. was kind of my... I like the way you got everybody else doing the work and you were the supervisor. Yeah, I supervised yeah, I like after that. a while. <laughs> Smart, smart. So you learned early on maybe that you didn't want to do that, that you liked managing people? or Not that you didn't want to do it, but that you liked managing and organizing? Um, you know, it's, it's, it came down to the last effort I had to put in to get most money, right? And that was right, it. Right. You know, no one liked doing the hard work. Uh, I did it. I still do it. But I, it's what's the fastest way to get to the goals that I'm looking at. And, right. Working with people that are paying them well, you know, doing those type of things are, are, are you important. know, are very important. Yeah. yeah. So, so from that, then did you go to college? Yeah, I went to, I did my undergraduate at Fresno State. Um, went there, also was a kind of an entrepreneur there. I had, at the time we had books, not, you know. Not laptops. Not laptops. Not iPads, right. And I would use, buy a bunch of used books or get books from all the fraternities and sororities and all the different things, and then I, we would resell them. So that was kind of my college money. Right. And then I worked at a bank. Uh, then I uh, graduated college and I worked for Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter at the time. So I came, gave me a good banking understanding of, you know, the real world, world of banking, uh, finance. Um, which leads to today is, you know, my strengths are finance. My strengths are how to raise money, how to position it. Um, my weaknesses, I know my weaknesses are, you know, the day-to-day -day grind of running the place are, are operational. So I bring great operators in. Right. I pay them well to operate. Uh, so what you're saying is key is you bring the right people, right, to complement your strengths. Yeah, you got to know your weaknesses. Right. There's two things in being an entrepreneur. You know your weaknesses, what you cannot do. And number two is learn how to fire. Oh, that's interesting. I want to hear more about that. Yeah, because you, keep, you build a relationship with the people you work with. And you know their kids, you know their families, and it's very difficult sometimes to let somebody go that's not great for your business. Right. So I think that's the hardest part to understand in your business is when to let someone go what's right for your business. Yeah, that's so important, right? Yeah. Having the right, the right, right people, is, or not, or having the wrong person can be just as. Well, important. you have the wrong, the, the wrong person hurts you over time because they get comfortable, or you're their buddy, or whatever it is that relationship is, it hurts your business. You got to look at the business as something that not doesn't have emotions. That's right. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. That's the I think the hardest part, like I just said, is is know when to let someone go or even reposition them some, somewhere else. Do you think it's, it's wiser to focus on your strengths and continue to build them, or is it better to focus on your weaknesses? I've heard both, both ends, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, becoming the best you can in what you know. Um, it's very simple. You know, people always say, what's the meaning of life? What's this, right? And I guess I get it from City, city Slickers, the movie. Uh -huh. It's just one movie. thing, right? So if you pick that one thing you're good at and stay with it, even though you fail at it and fail at it and fail at it, but you just keep doing that one thing, um, you got to figure out what it is. I don't, you know, that's just your passion. But figure out your passion of it. Don't let anyone else tell you you should be a doctor or a lawyer or this or that. Figure out what you want to do and go for it and stay with it. And when you fail, say, okay, that's, you know, that's, it didn't work that way. Let me try to figure out a different way. But I did my best. Right? Yeah, you, you, you try your best at one particular thing. Be honest with yourself. Look in the mirror. Say, I did, did I do my best or did I go out too much? 
I party with my friends when I should be doing this. I mean, there's a lot of things as a young adult where you, you, know, you get pulled away from. Um, when I was at Morgan, it was very interesting that uh, all the older guys would say, you're going to burn out because I worked literally 18 hours a day, and that was for about four years straight. And I would go, get up in the morning at 4.30, I would start reading the paper, I'll be at the office at 6.30, this is the, the West Coast time. Go through one o'clock to the market closes, and then I'll go to the, grab a quick snack, go to the gym, take a power nap for 20 minutes, get a quick workout in, go back to work, go meet my friend for a happy hour at five, and then I'll head back to the office until about 11, 30, 12. And I just did that. I just pumped it out. And um, my first year, I was um, national sales director, which is, you know, there's only three guys that have done it out of office of, you know, there's, well, we had, what, 40,000 people in our, in our Morgan. So it was big achievements that, that it takes that day-to-day -day grind of, you know, I don't see the tunnel. I don't see the light yet. I don't right. see the light. But like Is you said, working? staying with it, right? Yeah. Um, and definitely hard work. Sounds yeah. like it's one of your ingredients for sure. Well, like Open Gecko Park, it's not an easy task. It's, um, you're taking a, you know, square peg into a round hole initially. The cities don't know what you're doing. The permitting process, the, you know, the fire departments, the, you know, the, you're creating a new brand. Is it going to work? Um, letting the people know the marketing so that you have to as an entrepreneur you have to grasp every single thing that's out there and wear a million hats you know one day I'm, I'm a con con contractor <laughs> seriously I'm a contractor next day you know I'm the janitor I'm cleaning the next day I'm you know cutting a deal on the marketing side the next day I'm working on you know what's our POS system is going to be like what's our you know, our ticketing system, what's our, you know, the banking relationship we're going to have. You know, every single thing you better know or you're going to know very quickly. Or you better have somebody next to you when you yeah. have that meeting who knows all of Well, that, but you right? still got to know somebody enough. You, right. you have you to, know to know enough to know right. where, exactly. where, because you're signing it. Exactly. And that's a contract that you're getting into. Right. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And um, so you also just mentioned that about wearing different hats. Um, that requires somebody being flexible, right, and adaptable and being able to pivot. That's, that kind of brought that up in my mind. Yep. Um, do you find that you have to be those things? Oh, definitely, definitely. And you have to have the household. You know, I'm married to two kids now. Uh, my wife is very flexible on our time. She's a professional as well. And um, so you got to have the home front because that's your most important thing in life. Um, and how I look at it is, is a, a balance. I look at it as a pie chart. And if you have your pie chart, and sometimes your, the pies get a little bit bigger or smaller, depending on what you're doing, but you have to have that balance at all times. I think that's the key to, to, to life, not just success, is a true balance of life. Am I, get, am I working too much, or am I playing too much? Am I doing this too much? Or um, it's like anything in life has moderation and a balance. So if you could look at your life as a pie chart, how much time you spend with family, how much time you spend with friends, how much time you spend at work, and so on, so on, so forth. And, um, and balance that out and try to keep that balance at all times. And keep looking at that pie chart. I was going to ask you that, right? Do you constantly reevaluate that? Does your wife remind you when you're working <laughs> too many hours? Because I'll look at that pie chart at the beginning of the year, right? Yeah. I'll do my goals and, and just the things that I want to maybe do that year and accomplish. And I look at that pie chart. And then a few months in, I realize, hmm, yeah, I think I'm, or somebody will remind me that I'm working too many hours. You know, my wife is, uh, she has OCD of, of things. So she literally, you know, where we're sitting, we always take our, obviously, we have vacations at the end of the year and so forth, and she'll sit there, okay, let's write our goals out. Right. You know, let's achieve them. And then she just keeps reminding, mine are done, this one's done, <laughs> you know. So we're competitive, you know, so we compete against, you know, the things that we want right. to do. And, but, yeah, you have to definitely um, balance that out and, you know, just keep moving forward with, a, with, a, with the attitude, the positive attitude works. You know, I... I do hiking a lot and trekking with my friends and um, here's a lesson to learn a friend of mine very wealthy guy you would never know but he's just a very balanced disciplined wealthy guy great guy 
And um, Emma and I always ask each other, it's like, you know, if you had two minutes to live, what are you thinking of right now? You know, you're always thinking of family, friends, that perfect vacation, you know, that, you know, whatever it is, that great meal that you had, and let's go through your thoughts, your two minutes. You never think, I should have worked harder, I should have done this, I should have, you know, like some of the things. So some of those things are just not important in life. So find what, find what is important in life, and those are the things, give yourself that two-minute test. Yeah, that's a good test, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, just out of curiosity, um, do you like to cook? Yes. You yeah. do? What do you like to cook? You know, I'm, uh, Since I, uh, I try all different recipes. Do you? Yeah, yeah, my wife uh, doesn't cook that much right. or at all. <laughs> so it kind of sits to me. all of our strengths yeah, and yeah. weaknesses, nothing uh, I'm very, very good, I can admit, I'm very good at the barbecue. Because mm. I can do a lot of barbecue dishes. Right. And then some of mom's old recipes. <laughs> so, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I really do think that um, there's a peacefulness you find sometimes in cooking. Um, if you're doing it at your leisure, right? When you have to do it every day, it's not really very fun. Um, but when you're doing it for fun or entertaining, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, are you someone who likes to follow the recipe? Or do you like to make up your own recipes as you go along? Uh, you know, I think I'm, I, I like to see that someone else already tested it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have to reinvent something, but I like to, you know, right. do that one. My wife's different. She's a, she actually is a uh, PhD from Harvard. She's a chemist as well. And she will just like, just start throwing things in there. Right. I'm like, no, no, follow the recipe. This is, someone's created this. You so know? do you take... <laughs> Do you, so when you follow the recipe, if that's your right, yeah. that's your approach, do you bring that follow the recipe approach to business, or are you more no, about throwing in the ingredients? I throw in, in, in my world, it's it's uncharted territory. Um, so we're looking for the next thing that's going to be great. If it's a Ripley's Museum that has this or that or whatever oddity it is or attraction, um, you're always looking for that. Can, I, can those kids get entertained on that or that family get entertained on that? So you're always trying to recreate something yourself or distribute what we do. Right. You know, I'm, my thing is more distribution. I handle more distribution of other people's products, like Ninja Courses, right. Rock Balls, you know, and I'll, I'll lay it out my own concept. So, yeah. I got it, I got it. So what's next? Right, so you've been on magic shows, right? <laughs> uh, mostly entertainment, in the entertainment world. Yeah, entertainment, and we also had uh, outdoor entertainment festivals, right. uh, which was a big success we had in, within that. Um, so it's been around the family entertainment or music entertainment world that I've been into. I think just creating the next one that's out there, I have stuff in the pipe that I won't announce now, but oh, I will. We're gonna yeah, have to we're, bring John back <laughs> for that one. So. Yeah, that. You'll have um, to tell us when you're ready. That, uh, that we're working on, and then we're working on a pretty big play right now to launch off um, a brand with Gecko Park and another group that we're working with right now. Great. So what is it? So there's work, there's family, yeah. um, and then I always say that third piece is community, Correct. right? Whether that community is, is, is a church, right, or a religious um, institution or organization. What is it that's your passion, right, outside of those things? Is there we do a lot of really charity. You know, if you look at Gecko Park, we're, we're, when I created this, it's a community center. Okay, so we do a lot of charity. I mean, we get, I get an ask three, four times a day. Okay, and we usually say yes to every single thing. So if it's, you know, um, you know, we're doing one right now with, uh, with one of the administrators at the at, uh, Falcon Cove. She has cancer, so we're doing a big mm. fundraiser for her. Uh, we did the Espinoza family recently that her husband killed the wife and the kids were there left yeah, in Weston. A lot of those things. So that tied me up into the Rotary of Weston. Okay. So now I'm a Rotarian there. And we do a million charities. Yeah, that's. A I mean, you could get lost in um, uh, all the activities that you do there uh, with a charity, and it's, it's just great. I mean, it's a great group of people. I haven't done a lot of um, uh, Rotary groups anywhere else except Weston, but the Weston group, um, they really out there with the community. Um, a lot of different charities. Um, 
and you know, I really enjoy working with them on that. Good. Well, you know, we hope someday that you'll come out and talk to our kids. I think your story is amazing, uh, especially that it's in the entertainment field, <laughs> and that is right up their alley. Um, so I invite you uh, to come and speak to our high school program um, and talk about your entrepreneurship and your businesses and your ventures. Um, Again, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Thrilled about your success. Want to stay up on what, what goes on with Gecko Park. Um, let me see, just let me grab one of the t-shirts. So if you haven't been out there, it's in Weston. Correct. Uh, I did go out to visit. If you have children, you definitely want to go out there. Um, and you will be tempted to jump out on those trampolines. I was not tempted to get on the ninja course, though. Um, but I do want to read John's recipe uh, and some of the things that he touched on. And so today, here's some of the ingredients that I heard you talk about. Uh, vision, being cutting edge and wow factor, right, to make your business stand out. When you, there are failures and challenges, dust off, move forward. Uh, hiring the right people and learning how to fire the wrong people or terminate the wrong people. Knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Passion. Go for it and stay with it. I like that. I like that they go together, actually. Uh, wearing different hats. Balance with family, work, charity, community. And then, of course, having a positive attitude. And so it sounds like a great recipe and a recipe for <laughs> success, as we say. Okay. And thank you again for being here. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you on our next episode. And if you haven't been out to J World, come out and visit us. Have a great day.